Hello everyone. So in this video, I'm going to continue with my Azure Prompt Flow series and we'll see how we can integrate Llama Index. So the reason behind this video is, let's say you have already uh, having pre-written code using Llama Index, which is very well tested and verified. And now you want to pull the same piece of code into your Azure Prompt Flow. So when doing this activity, you need not to write everything from scratch but you can reuse most of the pieces as it is in your Azure Prompt Flow. So let's see how we can do it. So the very first thing we need is we need to have an instance of Azure Machine Learning. So you can go to create and click on new workspace. It will go ahead and create a new workspace for you in which we will be writing code for our Prompt Flow. So once this Azure Machine Learning workspace is created, you can go to Machine Learning Studio and this is how it will look like so if you don't know how to create uh, like workspace or how to create connection strings then i would recommend you to watch initial one or two videos in my prompt flow series and it will give you pretty much good idea about how to do that then the second thing is we need to create a connection so go to connections and here you can choose what type of llm you are using and what kind of connection do you want so you can go with Azure OpenAI, OpenAI or whatever you want. But in this video, I will be going with the custom one because I want to do everything from the scratch and I want to reuse the code which I have already written. So in that case, you need to provide the unique name for your custom connection. Then provider would be custom. Here you need to supply everything in the key value pair form. So here it would be your API key, then value, API base, endpoint and everything you need to furnish it over here. And just click on save so once you are done with save you will see a new custom endpoint um, connection created using this custom flow so let's go to our uh, flows click on create and here I'm going with the standard one because we don't want any pre-written thing we just want our everything to be from scratch so let's go with the basic one so that we can go ahead and delete the unnecessary nodes which are already present over there so here I'm giving a unique name for my flow. So this name has to be unique within that workspace. It's going to take a few seconds. Today it is a bit slow. And you can see that the flow is created. Next thing what we need to do is uh, we need to go to requirements file. And here we need to provide all the dependencies which we need. So whatever you want to install or whatever you installed using pip in your notebook, you just have to do the same thing over here. So the first thing I need here is llama index. Then I need llama, in llama index readers dot web. I will tell you in a while what we will be doing as a sample application. But let me quickly pull in this thing. So then we need to say LLMs and here we'll have Azure Open AI. So these are the three things which we need. I will quickly save it and close my requirement.cs. Next thing is we need to spin the runtime. So I'm just doing it here rather than creating from the compute. So it's going to take some time. Meanwhile, what we can do is we can go ahead and start creating our node. So I'm going to create a new node here, Python node. Let's give it some name. So you can give any unique name and that name has to be unique within this particular flow. So I would say my custom node. Definitely you have to give this name which makes sense to you whenever you are watching this node in future. So and this node will take some input. So let's consider a scenario wherein we want to we want user to ask questions based on the given web page. So we will be providing URL as an input and the question which is asked by the user and this system should give me the response based on what are the data we are feeding. So here I'm going to rename it to query and here we will type in some questions. So we'll do it later. Let's say hi as of now. And then the output here would be my 
output of my node which I just created. So my custom node output. This I'm setting it over here. And here, let's delete it so that there won't be any confusion. Let's delete this existing node as well. Okay, so you can see that uh, under the graph there is nothing. So here we have this query, we have the output configured. Next thing is I need to provide the input variables and what are the required packages we, uh, we should have. So here I am just creating a variable name query. Then I am again creating another one which is for connection. And this is my connection. Let's remove this. Okay. Let's go ahead and import all the required packages. So the very first one I need is as we are reading using uh, reading the web page using Llama index, all the packages will be related to that only. So I'm saying from prompt flow dot connections. First of all, let's import the custom connection because the connection string which we created is a custom connection. Then we need import llama index dot llms dot azure open ai and we'll say import azure open ai then we need for settings and the index creation part so for this we have llama index dot code so don't worry about this code you will find this code in the llama index document itself wherein they have written some sample code so I'm just grabbing it from there and tapping it because sometimes pasting is not working in this particular node it will give you some random error like Unicode and all those things that's the reason I'm tapping it over here and another thing is summary index so nothing fancy we are doing here in this code it's just copy paste from the portal itself or the documentation itself and another thing which we need is for uh, I think we are done. Okay, one we need is for reading the web page. So I'm going to say llama index dot readers dot web. And here we will have import simple web page. So these are the things which we need. Let me uh, first establish this connection so that we don't miss anything. So the input for this node would be the query which is supplied by the user. So let's put this here. So now we can see something in our graph. I will quickly save it once. Our runtime is also created. So let me go here and here you can see the install and save so you can do it and sometimes it will do it automatically whenever you are first writing your requirements and then spinning up the written time so anything would work no need to do it manual manually okay so it is still going oops I'll close this okay now I'm going to write my stuff here and before that let's go ahead and click on validate and parse so that we can see all the required parameters over here so now you can see now there are two parameters earlier it was just input one but now you can see both the parameters and here under custom it will list down all the connections which you have created in this workspace under the custom category and the query is the one which we got from the input let's save it okay now the next thing we need is we need to first of all construct the LLM and for that we can do using Azure open AI and let's quickly type in few lines of code and here make sure that you are using the proper variable name the one which is used over here you have to refer the same here and then you can say Azure chat model so until and unless you will configure this under the parameters you will not get any IntelliSense related to the parameters which you have defined in your connection so again it is the chat model then we need to have API key so let's say con dot API key and we also need API version so it's here 
and the last thing is our endpoint so we'll say azure endpoint is equals to con dot azure api base so these are the variables which i have used in uh, setting up the custom connection so that's why it is appearing over here okay next thing is we need to con uh, associate this particular llm with our llama index settings so we'll just say settings dot llm equal to llm and then we need to read the or the associate the web page or the link so here i would use simple web page reader and we'll say html.txt that if you want to convert it to text then just say otherwise you can set it to false and then we'll say load data inside this we will be passing an url so this is the url which you can even pass it as an input but i will just tap in over here let me quickly grab that url so this is the url and i'm going to ask questions from it so that is what i'm pasting it over here then we need to work on the instruct uh, index construction part so we'll say summary index dot from documents and here we'll have data okay the only thing which is remaining is constructing the query engine so we'll say index dot as query engine let's create a variable for response and engine dot query okay so inside this we need to pass in the question which user is asking so this question is in the form of this query variable so that's all i will quickly return the response and i believe we are good to go let me quickly validate the cell before we execute it save it and we can type in the question here so what did paul graham work on so i will save it once again and then we'll run the flow you can see that it is running under the graph let's give it few more seconds and it should give us the output so it is saying response is not defined okay made it a typo here Let me give it a try one more time. So on the top you can see that it is still running. So there are various places where you can see the current state. So one is on the very top. Then you have here on the uh, this bar next to our workflow name. Then on the right hand side under the graph also you can see that it is still running. Okay, so it's green. Let's go ahead and see the output. So you can see that this is the output which we have received. So this is what Graham uh, Paul has worked on. And I hope you got an idea how to integrate it. So if you will see, these are the lines of code which you must have already written, similar kind of code which you have already written in your notebook or in your Python file. So it's just a matter of setting these parameters, connection strings, and then updating your requirement.cs. I hope you enjoyed watching this and thanks for watching.